Right. Good morning, everyone. We'll just give people a few minutes to join. Maybe I will share my screen. Just give people a couple of minutes. Thanks for joining this morning. Really appreciate your time. Oh, classic. Someone's at the front door. Be back in a moment. joys of working from home. Right, how many are we up to now? Okay, we've got 11 on, we'll give it one more, 12, we'll got, give it another minute and then we'll get started. Okay, so um, we'll crack on in the interest of time. Thank you for your time this morning. My name is Chris Linzel. I look after the network management and analytics portfolio um, for Uber here in the UK and I. And this morning in conjunction with West Coast, um, we're doing an overview of um, what's new in Central 253. Um, so the agenda we'll cover is just provide some context of um, how Aruba Central fits with the edge services platform, a summary of the new licensing model that we've introduced as part of 253. Um, we'll talk a bit about AI operations and the power of it, what it means, what it does, to give you some examples, um, and then give you an overview of what's new and a demonstration. So a lot to fit in the air. Um, initially, so what I want to do is just do a poll just to understand the audience. So if you could participate in the poll, that would be great. It should be on your screen now. It just helps me understand um, who we're talking to today and make sure I set um, the level right for the audience. So if you could participate in the poll, I'd be really grateful. Um, no one's polling yet. So there should be a poll appeared on your screen. Great. Somebody's Replying, excellent. If you could just participate in the poll, give us an idea. It just really helps us understand um, the profile of the audience and then um, how, you know, what level to pitch this. I can adjust it slightly as we go through. Give people a couple more moments to reply. Um, um, we've only had th four people have replied. We can do better than that. Five, excellent. Um, yep. Yeah. If you could just reply to the poll, that would be great. It gives us an understanding, as I say. Um, okay, so some people, uh, it looks like some people are fairly new to it, which is great. Other people are comfortable with it and others are fairly new. Okay, right, last chance to vote. I'll close the poll now and we'll move on. And the poll is in. Uh, we can share the results so people can see. Here's an overview of the profile. Um, looks like there's a good broad section. Right, okay, that helps me. Thank you very much. All right, so ESP, the edge services platform is the way Aruba described the way that we architect and build um, our networks. So it's, this is really an evolution of what we've talked about for a number of years called the mobile first architecture. And there's three key sort of pillars to the edge services platform. One is the unified infrastructure. So that's all the switches, APs, um, SD branch gateways, etc., providing us with the connectivity, all secured with zero trust security. So that's delivered by ClearPass Device Insight and ClearPass Policy Manager. 
And then we've got AI operations, which is all delivered by Aruba Central, which we'll spend most of today talking about. And yeah, our customers consume this in the traditional CapEx model, but we can also do it via an OpEx model as well through combination of HPFS or Aruba GreenLake. So if we look at the edge services architecture, edge services platform architecture in a little more detail, the bottom layer, we've got the connectivity layer, the unified infrastructure, our Wi-Fi 6 certified APs, you know, one AP that can be deployed in instant or controller based mode. Um, no need to make the choice up front, flexibility. It provides not just Wi-Fi connectivity, but an IoT platform as well, because it supports Zigbee Bluetooth as well. So you know, you can connect all your building management systems and IoT devices, electronic shelf labels, etc. They can all be um, applied or connect, attached to the Wi-Fi net network, the Aruba Wi-Fi network, one infrastructure for the connectivity of everything. We've got the CX range of switching. So you've got a standard switching and operating platform all the way from the access through to the data center. Um, really unique from the industry from that perspective, highly scalable, highly resilient. We've got our SD branch solution, which provides um, branch connectivity over um, WAN circuits. You can use you know, cheaper internet circuits to provide highly resilient, scalable internet connectivity. And all of this can be managed by Aruba Central. And recently we've got the addition of Silver Peak, which further adds to our SD WAN solution. On top of that, we've got the policy layer where we, where we deliver protection as I say this comes with two key elements you've got device insight so this allows you to identify everything connected to your network and understand what it is and the only way to secure your network or secure a customer's network is really understanding what's connected to it and then you can use clear pass policy manager to apply the appropriate policies to anything connecting to the network and that's how we trust deliver zero trust security and that's um and part of the device insight capability you'll see later is actually included in the new version of Aruba Central. And at the top layer, we've got the analyze and app layer where we're delivering AI operations. And this is where Aruba Central sits, which we'll talk about more in a minute. But it's also where we've got user experience insights, Meridian, location services, etc. So this is our analyze and app layer. This is actually the diagram I think describes it best. So you've got that unified infrastructure providing the highly resilient, scalable um, connectivity that I was talking about, all secured around the edge with zero trust security with CDPI and um, policy manager. And in the cloud, we've got Aruba Central using the telemetry that we're getting from the network, allowing our customers to manage and monitor the network, um, but now extending that and doing something that we call AI operations. So using AI and machine learning to help identify, troubleshoot and optimize the connectivity of the network. And we'll come back to AI ops in a bit more detail um, in a few moments. So one of the things that's new in Aruba Central 253 is a new licensing model um, called the ESP Software License Suites. Um, so up until now, Aruba Central has been licensed by a combination of device management tokens and service management tokens. So a device management token, you buy one of those, it could be applied to manage an AP or a switch. And then you've got the service tokens that extend that function, extend the functionality, um, adding things like UCC, guest, etc. So now um, we've updated this. So basically we have the same um, license model for central in the cloud and central on-prem. And licenses are, are split into what we call foundation and advanced, so no more service tokens. Um, so you have the foundation license or the advanced license. Most of the existing functionality that we have today is in the foundation license, including guests, presence analytics, all those things that people previously would have had to buy a service token to enable. Um, so we have these two sort of buckets of functionality, but most customers foundation will deliver everything that they need. Over time, we'll be adding more to the advanced licenses as we extend um, functionality. Um, and then the other difference is the fact that we've now got different licenses based between APs and switches. So APs have an AP foundation and an AP advanced license. Um, and switches, we have different um, licenses based on the switch family. So the 2500, 6100 is one license, the 62900 is another license, etc. So different licenses based on the different 
um, families. And at long last, we've now, up until now, we've had one, three and five year licenses, but going for um, now we've got the addition of seven and 10 year licenses. So there's the fundamental changes in the licenses, um, but most of your customers foundation will be fine. Um, and say, just make sure you order separate you know, your APs from your switches and then you um, choose the appropriate switch licenses. So for our existing customers, when we upgraded them from 252 to 253, we automatically converted their existing licenses that were assigned to devices to the license of the appropriate type for that device. Um, so, for example, if they were managing AEPs, it'd be converted to a Foundation AP license. If it was managing a 2900, it'd be, man it'd be the 2900 bracket of license um, for the switches. So it will be converted to the equivalent foundation license or automatically the user will not have had to do anything. If you've got any customers that are using UCC, this is actually in the advanced license bracket. Um, but what we can do for those customers um, is we can allow list that. So if you do have customers using that, let us know, we'll get that allow listed. Any device licenses or device management tokens that are not currently assigned to devices um, would still be classed as a device management token. And the customer has until the end of December this year um, to choose to either to choose what they want to convert those to, whether they, and they can convert like 10 to AP licenses, another 10 to the appropriate Switch Foundation licenses. Otherwise, at the end of Jan, at the end of December, they'll automatically be converted to AP Foundation licenses. So they've got until the end of the year to make that, but the conversion has happened already for devices that are assigned. Um, so that's the new licensing model that we introduced. Um, now jumping back to AI operations. Um, AI ops, I mean, this is Gartner's definition over AI ops. So this is what we do here is it combines big data machine learning to automate IT operations processes, including event correlation, anomaly detection, and causality determination. And you need at least two coffees in the morning before you try that one. Um, but that's what we're doing with AI ops. And <clears throat> If you have a look, Aruba Central has you know, 90,000 customers worldwide. We're managing 1.3 million network devices and every day about 100 million clients are connecting to networks managed by Aruba Central. And that gives us an, an amazingly rich and very data lake. And it's the size and quality of the data lake that really dictates how good your AI is, obviously in combination with the 18 plus years of domain expertise that Aruba have. Our data scientists use this to be able to do a, a number of key things. One is around automating root cause analysis. So we can, we're developing AI algorithms that will identify issues on the network, pinpoint them and highlight to the user, but not just point them to what that issue is, but actually um, explain how it can be resolved as well. So we give you remediation actions. Um, we can baseline the automatically the behavior and performance of your network, both in your own environment, but also against similar peer networks. And if it goes outside that baseline, we'll notify you and explain what's causing that. And that's all done automatically. And last but not least, and truly uniquely to Aruba, is what we call peer benchmarking, where you've got, um, where we can compare in an anonymized way how your network or how your customer's network is performing relative to other people's networks and look for optimizations that will help um, improve the performance of the network and make those recommendations. So that's what we're doing with AI Ops. And a couple of examples quickly just to bring this to life of what we can do. So you've got, um, if you've got dual band capable clients, um, sometimes they get stuck on the 2.4 band. Um, and this results in, you know, a poorer performance for the five gig capable devices and the 2.4 band gets overloaded. This is really tricky to spot in the real world using traditional tools um, and even trickier to resolve. But with Aruba Central and AI Ops, we'll identify this issue, looking at the telemetry that's coming from the network, pinpoint, um, highlight it to you with an insight and also make configuration change recommendations. If those changes are applied, then basically the, um, 
the dual band capable clients will move across and automatically migrate. Um, they'll get move onto the five gigahertz band, get a better user experience, and the 2.4 band will freed up for the 2.4 clients and they'll get a better performance as well. Another really good example, and we work with a large retail chain in the US on this one, is around um, passerby traffic causing, uh, um, reducing the efficiency of in-store or in-building Wi-Fi. Um, so what they were finding was people going past their stores, their mobile devices were, you know, beaconing, talking to the Wi-Fi network and dragging down its performance. We were able to come up with algorithms that identified this and come up with recommendations on how to resolve it. And when the customer applied this to their stores, they actually got up to a 25% increase in network performance without adding any new hardware. When we then applied that our, um, insight to our broader customer base, we actually, right across all the different verticals where Aruba Central is used, we um, found that th at least 30% of our customers actually benefited from this insight. So you can see the real power of AI operations in action. And what we're doing today is really the start of a very exciting journey with Aruba Central and AI Ops. Um, so today, you know, we're identifying issues on the network, making recommendations on how to resolve them. We've also demonstrated the capability um, of adding a button that says, you know, go fix it for me. And then obviously the final logical conclusion to this is the fact that it becomes a closed loop system. And if you turn it on, we will be able to sort of automatically identify issues and take actions to resolve them. So really freeing up time for your customers to go and add value to the business elsewhere. So you get, if your customers are get onto the central journey, it's a really exciting, you know, we're really at the start of doing something really exciting and innovative here. So for those of you that are new to Central, Central, as you may have guessed by now, is our cloud hosted management platform. Um, it's hosted in AWS for our UK and Ireland customers. The, yeah, they do see European instance of this that's hosted in Frankfurt. Um, so they've got all the benefits of clouds, highly resilient, highly scalable, and no hardware to, and software to maintain on site. And we can support the customer right throughout their, their life cycle and journey with their Aruba network. We can do zero touch provisioning. So preload central with the configuration of devices when they boot up, they talk to central, download those configs. We've even got an installer app that you can give to people that have been um, installing the networks on site such that you can assign a site to an, an installer. They can then use the mobile app to scan the device as it registers, reads their serial number, assigns a license to it. And then when they power up that device, connected it to the network, um, it downloads its config and they get three green traffic lights in the install wrap. So it really speeds up the installation and deployment of networks. Once the network's up and running, you've got that true elusive unified single glass, single pane of glass management and visibility of our wired wireless and SD branch gateways with AI ops helping to optimize and troubleshoot it. You've got great visibility of what the clients are doing, client troubleshooting really powerful and I'll show you a bit of this in the demo. And as well, we've got um, visibility of what the network's being used for. Um, Aruba Wi-Fi has security built in, not just bolted on, and part of that is the policy enforcement firewall, which means we now have deep, which we have deep packet inspection in, in the APs and the gateways, and that gives us visibility into all the applications um, that are running on the network. We recognize over two and a half thousand of those, and you can then take control back. Anything you're managing with Aruba Central um, is covered by the 24 seven TAC support and software upgrade support as well. And if as a partner, you're looking to diversify and look at adding um, being able to deliver a network as a service, you can do that with Aruba Central as well. There's MSP mode where basically you can, you own the hardware and the software licenses and you deliver the network as a service to our, your customers. And that can all be branded with your brand um, and your customers are tenants within the system and have their own secure view of the network. So really powerful solution. And it manages the Aruba AOS switches, the CX switches, our branch gateways and instant access points. So that's um, you know, a quick overview of the new licensing model, ESP and um, what Central does. Before I move on to what's new in 
253. Um, Jack, any questions that need answering to the broader community, or are you just answering them as we go along in the chat? No, nothing, nothing yet. Okay, thanks. Right, so Central 253 went live a little while ago. All the servers have been upgraded, so you and your customers will be using 253 now. Um, so the key, as you'll see over the next few slides, we've added a lot of new functionality. Um, but the key areas I want to focus on were around Aruba CX. So we've got great new support for managing the CX switches, as I'll show. We've got CDPI integration. So ClearPass Device Insight is now integrated, or a subset of its functionality is integrated within Aruba Central. So it really helps our customers understand what's connected to the network. And it's only by doing that can you secure the network. And as we're all you know, working from home or working remotely, or, etc. Um, <clears throat> we've got great management now of the um, VIA clients as well. So we've always been able to manage the um, IAP VPN solutions where you could have a small remote offices, home offices, branch offices, etc. But now you'll be able to see um, VIA clients. So people VPNing in via the VIA clients into the gateway. That's all managed and via Uber Central. So look at breaking this down into the three key pillars of ESP on zero trust, as I mentioned, CDPI is now integrated in. So now under the clients menu option, there's a new tab called client profile. And this gives you the, the familiar ClearPass device insight um, dashboard showing you all the different types of devices connected to your network and how many or what proportion there are of them. And we're doing really accurate fingerprinting of the, the, the devices to identify what they are. And um, the source of this data to do the fingerprinting is the instant access points um, that we're managing. And if you've got branch gateways, um, we've got data from them as well. So very granular visibility into exactly what's connected to the network. Um, and if you go to, if you drill into a particular client, for example, um, as you would normally, there's a new profiles tab here, which gives you visibility into the profile and how it's been derived. So um, the information we get from the IAPs gives us static attributes like, you know, Mac OID, um, user agent, DHCP options, et cetera or DHCP profile. And um, so that helps us identify the devices. Um, if you're using gateways as well, we also have flow data there that give us more visibility into the type of device it is and its behavior. So um, you get a lot of the data, you get good data from the IAPs, um, you get even more if you've got a class customer using gateways. So CDPI, key part of it. Um, as I mentioned, upgrading the support for CX is an important element. So in um, previously, we had monitoring and template-based management support for the CX switches in Central. What we've added in um, Central 253 is go beyond this template-based management we're now doing what we call GUI-based management. So the GUI-based management has a slightly different look and feel to the AOSS switch um, GUI-based management. And I think my understanding is the general direction is we're gonna move to this um, look and feel for everything going forward. So you've got the GUI-based config, so you'll be able to configure everything you see here. VLANs can be added, you can configure ports, etc., all via the GUI. Or alternatively, you can use something called multi-editor. Now, if you're familiar with NetEdit, which is that standalone tool for managing the CX switches, what we've done is we've embedded that capability within Aruba Central and enabled that. So here we've got the um, here we've got the visit that ability within Aruba Central. So you can select multiple switches and then edit their configuration. Um, just like you would in NetEdit. So you can browse the config um, and see what the config's like across all the devices on the network. You can, so for example, you can see the config here overlaid. Um, the, the, the capital there is host name, that's got multiple values. Um, here you've got the, um, you can see the multiple values of that. You've got the overlaid, um, configuration here. So the areas that are dark is common configuration. The gray areas 
are um, where you've got device specific configuration. And you can change this config. So you could click, I can right click that host name and then edit that config. So you can see here, I can now change the configuration um, and I can make that change on all, to make it the same on all of the switches that I'm editing the config on or do it on a device by device basis. Um, and you can then very easily view the diff of, of configs between the devices. And then when you apply them, it works just like NetEdit. It downloads the config to a shadow database, check it's valid and can be applied and then you can actually apply the configuration across multiple devices. There's also what we call the uh, multi-edit. Another area is the ability to um, do express configuration. So here we can um, download device profiles or and network analytics scripts as well can be configured across multiple CX devices. So really powerful CX device management now, rolling in that NetEdit functionality into Aruba Central. Um, yeah, the devil's always in the detail. Make sure you look at the help to understand exactly what's supported, what switch versions are supported. It's all there um, in the online help with Aruba Central. Um, we've also rounded out the support on the AOS switch GUI based management. So now um, we've got all the ability via the GUI to configure everything that you need to do to deploy dynamic segmentation. So um, that can now all be done via the UI. So um, you know, now you know, many more of our customers will be able to do UI based management of our AOSS switches. Another significant enhancement is when you're looking at overrides or config sync issues, et cetera, with those AOS switches, the way we displayed that information previously wasn't as humanly readable as it could be. It was a sort of a JSON format, um, with, um, but it's now it's much more humanly readable, um, so much more easy to understand. So that's enhancements to switch management. If we look at um, any ease of use enhancements, we've got things like the AI search um, is really intelligent. So there's some vendors out there make a lot of fuss about natural language, you know, interacting with their tool via natural language. We can do that with Aruba Central with the AI search. You don't need to buy extra licenses to do it. And so the search is really clever in the sense that it understands the, where your customer is in their journey to, on Aruba Central. So if they're just starting out, the suggested queries are very much about how to do things from a getting started perspective. And then as they, you know, they set up Central and they're using it, those suggested um, searches change based on what they've been doing and where they are on their central journey. Uh, we've also in this search made it much easier to get from a search item to um, exactly what you want to do. So in this case, you know, we looked up for problem APs, it's identified them. And rather than just go and start managing that AP, we can go and do things like do a network check, configure the group it's a member of, look at the clients of it. You can do that much faster with a single click. AI insights have had enhancements as well. We talked about insights in the introduction. Um, so um, we've had AI insights on the AOS switches. We've now got the same insights for the CX switches. So there's good parity there. Um, we've also introduced some new wireless insights and this isn't everything because there was time to talk about it. But the key highlights are things like issues around captive portals will now spot and bring them up as an insight as well as Wi-Fi association issues will be um, associated with, um, but will be displayed as insights as well. Um, you can also filter insights. If you've got a lot of insight, you can filter them based on the category, whether they're Wi-Fi switch availability type insights. So significant improvements around there. Monitoring, um, we've got some good enhancements here and I'll show you this in the demo in a minute. So we've got ability to um, drill down into the wireless lands that an AP is broadcasting and see more details about them at the bottom of the page. Our channel utilization around an AP has been enhanced. What you got previously um, was is shown at the top. So it just showed you sort of overall utilization. Now you can see where that's, you know, is it be created by Wi-Fi, non-Wi-Fi interference, receiving or transmitting traffic, et cetera. So greater visibility. 
Um, as I talked about in the introduction, we have visibility of remote clients. So if you're using the, you've got customers using the VIA client to um, VPN in and to the network, then they're now visible within the clients and indicated with their own logo. So as you can see here, we've got um, Wi-Fi clients, wired clients, and now the VIA clients. And then you can drill in and or just filter the view and just show me the remote clients. Um, and then if you're looking at a client, you can see that client's connected by a particular tunnel to um, that particular gateway. And you can troubleshoot that path and monitor it, etc. The topology has been enhanced. So um, now we will discover third party devices and represent them in the topology using LLDP. So we're not monitoring or managing those third party devices, but you'll be able to see if they're connected to one of our supported devices, you'll be able to see the fact it's connected and what type of device it is. And we're getting that information via LLDP. We can also do what we call VLAN overlays. So you can select a particular VLAN and see which um, switches, ports, APs, et cetera, that VLAN's configured on, on the network. So really nice enhancements around topology. Client monitoring, um, we got what we called the live client, the, the health bar was a new feature in the last release. Um, so you can pin the health bar up for a client or a device um, and it shows the status. And what we've done now is this status is now sort of virtually live. So it updates every five seconds. Um, so if you're looking and monitoring a particular client or AP, this information is updated every like five seconds. Um, and it will be for about 15 minutes. And then after that, you've got a refresh button that you hit or you just unpin it and repin it. But um, that's a really useful feature. The other piece is around, um, yeah, we're, we're improving the responsiveness of the client list um, and status. So any new client connecting to the network, it's, uh, it's called connected to the network will be displayed here within 35 seconds of it um, connecting to the network or if it disconnects yeah, in less than a minute, it will have disappeared. And we've now got this status called connecting. So yeah, we'll show you that clients aren't fully connected yet they'll show in the connecting state. So, you know, much li better live status of what's connected to the network. Alerts and reports have had some enhancements as well. Um, so on alerting, we're able to now um, do notifications at a site level. So if, if you have different people within the organization that are responsible for different sites, um, then you can set up an email notification specifically um, so that notifications from a particular site go to a particular person. So email notifications. Um, we now we can set up thresholds on the uplink usage now and get alerts around that. So that's a really nice enhancement to have. Reporting. There's some new widgets and reporting around the top end. So easy, much easier to see historically you know, which are the busiest APs, which are the least busy APs the bottom APs by usage here, um, have all been added to the reporting to further extend that from a historical reporting perspective. And don't forget, we've got visibility of up to a year here. Um, and if you look at what some of our competitors do, yeah, that they've got very short time windows for reporting. And if you need longer time windows, you're having to buy extra licenses in order to do that. With Central, all included. Floor plans. Um, We've had these obviously for some time, if you're familiar with Central, um, but now there's a really nice way of, if you're looking at a, an AP, um, you can see where it is from a floor plan perspective, geographically, where it's on the floor plan. But if you then wanted to go to the live floor plan that's showing you coverage, client location, et cetera, with a single click now, it takes you um, there. A few other enhancements that are worth talking about. Um, firmware upgrades we can now do on a site level, which makes a lot of sense. You, you know, rather than do the whole group that may be split across multiple sites, you can do it on a site by site basis. Um, web hooks are there. So we've got, sorry, web streaming APIs are there. So you've got all the streaming APIs. So um, if you want location services or presence services, etc., you can gain access to that via the streaming APIs. Okay, so that's enough of slides. Let's have a look at Aruba Central in action. Any questions, Jack, when I'm just firing up the demo?
Yeah, I just answer a couple of questions. Okay, you've been ans answering them, great. Right. Yes. Right, I'll, I'll just start with a bit of a high level overview of Central and then I'll, um, from a functionality perspective, then I'll dive in to some of the new functionality. Okay, let me just set this one off and as well, and that will save us some time later. So this is Aruba Central. When you log in, you get uh, the network health dashboard. Um, and this, there's a couple of concepts that are really important for you and your customers to understand about Central if you're new to it. One is groups. Groups dictate configuration. So devices, members of a group, get the configuration from that group. Um, sites are a monitoring construct. So you group devices based on the sites are where they're located and then you can monitor those sites. And then labels allow you to slice and dice things in different ways. So you know, if you've got an education customer, for example, the, um, a good example of that would be you could label your classroom APs for us as your, um, you know, your admin error APs, etc. And so you can view them differently. The network status can be seen here on the, the dashboard um, geographically, or um, if you're more of a spreadsheet type person, you've got it in a table here showing you the same information. Um, I'm going to use the dashboard. Graphical views, much I prefer that. So here the status that's shown here is based not just on whether devices are up or down, we've got issues around whether there's noise and channel utilization, etc. cetera, um, issues, so Wi-Fi issues, whether there are issues with clients, any of those AI insights I was talking about, whether you've got devices up or down, um, and if you've got any of the user experience insight sensors, um, and we've got a webinar coming up on this on the 20th of May, um, which, you know, watch out for. Um, but the user experience insight sensors, if you've got those on the site, will show that status as well. You can drill into a site very easily and see the status of that site um, from a persist of clients over time, any Wi-Fi issues over time, etc. cetera. Um, you can look at the, you can go back in time for up to three months. And here you can see on the change log, you can see when devices rebooted, when there were firmware upgrades, etc. If you can't remember what the configuration change was, um, you've got all the config log here showing you what was pushed out from a configuration perspective. You've got a really nice topology of the network. Actually, we'll change the site that we're managing to look at a more interesting topology. Um, yep, so you've got the interesting topology here. So you've got the APs connected to a switch in this case, and then connected by a high availability pair of our ST branch gateways so over different, um, you know, VPN circuits running over different broadband connections back to the data gateways in the data center. So here you can see true integrated management of the wired wireless and ST branch solution. Um, we've got Wi-Fi connectivity. I talked about this, that visibility into connectivity issues on the network. Um, so this is using the deep packet inspection, for example, to identify whether we've got issues with association authentication, DHCP or DNS. And you can see this on a site basis or globally. So it looks like there's authentication issues on this site. Um, you can see which clients are impacted by that very easily. You can see which SSIDs are, this is impacting. So, and up here, what we've got is the um, insights that purely relate to connectivity issues. Um, and we talked a bit about insights in the introduction. Um, so if we have a look at those, um, we can look at the insights from my entire network here. You can see here, we've got, yeah, a dozen or 15 insights showing that um, what's going on on my network and what I need to worry about. So here, for example, is that example where we're talking about dual band capable clients being stuck on the 2.4. So you've got information about that, which clients are impacted, which APs were impacted. Um, and here you've got the remediation recommendations. Um, similarly, if you um, look at 
looks like there's some issues with high latency around roaming. Um, and you can see which um, clients are impacted by this, what the potential cause of that and recommended remediation actions. And this is, um, yeah, we've got what, a dozen or so issues here that we need to worry about. Whereas if you look at how you manage your network traditionally, you've got you know, thousands of events in the event log that you'd have to plow through or your customers would have to plow through in order to, to understand what's going on on the network. With AI Insight, really straightforward. Um, we're doing the, you know, we're doing all the hard work for your customers, helping pinpoint and identify causes and issues in the network and helping them um, understand what the issue is. Now, if for example, you know, you've got a help desk and they've customers, one of the users has phoned in and said Simran's got a problem. Um, you can see here the fact, you know, you can use the search bar at the top to find Simran. We can then drill in and we found him and we can see the client information on Simran. So it's connected to this ID, this SAD connected to this AP. You've got all the details here from Device Insight showing you um, details about that particular client, what exactly what type of device he is. Um, if we have a look at the insights here, you can see um, you know, what insights are around for this, have been raised for this particular client. Looks like it's probably just a username and password issue. If there's another type of issue, you'd have the appropriate insight for it here, or alternatively, you can um, turn on live troubleshooting. And um, that will then um, stream all the connectivity issues um, that are coming from that particular device. Um, so it, it streams the connectivity events between that client and all the APs on that site. So although I'm sitting here in the UK, this is running in a lab in California, I can remotely troubleshoot this because I've got all the information I need. If I needed to, I could do a packet capture um, and uh, download the PCAP file um, and troubleshoot it offline. Um, so let's have a jump and have a look at some of the new functionality. Um, so as I talked about, we've got um, CDPI integration. Um, so that is now under clients, client profile. If we go under here, what we can do is we can see, uh, if we go back in time a bit longer, go back a month, you can see all the types of devices connected to this network. So you can see I've got a couple of the UXI sensors, Android printer, a couple of Windows PCs, a couple of iPads, um, etc. You can see exactly what type of devices are or have been connected to my network. Um, and I can then drill down into this and see exactly what those devices are. Um, so do, do, do. You can see whose devices they were, et cetera, or are, and then you can drill in and find out more details about them. And that's at the, that's at the, um, at the you've got that visibility at the global level, site level, or when you drill down, if we look at clients, if I look at um, connected clients here, um, here, this is, um, my mobile, we can drill in on that. Um, and here you can see, um, yeah, it, it's identified it as an Android device, etc. But if you, it's connected to this SID, this AP, connected to this switch, we can look at the profile in more detail. I don't have any of the SD branch gateways on the network, but you can see what we're using is the information from the instant APs is using a combination of DHCP, Mac, OID and the user agent in order to identify the fact that this is an Android smartphone. And then I can um, define a tag for this um, and that tag can then be used as part of the clear pass policy server to um, assign policies, etc., to this type of device when it connects to the network. Um, one, okay, what we'll do now is I just need to switch accounts to another one to show you the CX. So if we switch users, we'll go to this one that's got one of my colleagues has some CX switches in their setup and we can show you the, um, 
the UI management of the CX switches. So if we launch that. So as I said, the C previously we had monitoring and template based configuration. Now we've got GUI based configuration of um, the CX devices. So I'm going to select this, the, the group that's managing these switches, devices. And then if we go to switches, we can see here, I've got a couple of um, CX switches that we, we're monitoring. And from a monitoring perspective, yeah, these look just like um, you're monitoring the um, AOS switches that you'd be familiar with. Yeah, you've got all the system information, the client information, etc. All of it is the same and very consistent with, um, you can see the neighbors on these switches, um, etc. You can see the VLANs that are configured. POE, all that good stuff's here within, just like you're managing the AOS switches, we can do that for the CX switches. Now, if we go back to the group, what you can do, if you remember, group drives configuration, and you act, so group selected, now we're going over here to, for configuration, and here we can um, see we're now in the GUI management. So here we can do things like add VLANs if we wanted to, very easy to add a VLAN across all these devices within the group, or you can, um, if we go back, you know, configure to interface configuration on these devices as well. So GUI-based management of a good subset of the functionality. Now, if you, if you want to go beyond that, say we've got multi-editor, which is that net edit type functionality now embedded within um, Aruba Central. So as its name suggests, you select multiple devices, then we can do things like view the config. Um, so this allows us to browse the config and, and see where the config is the same or different across those groups of devices. So here you can see um, this capitalization here shows that, that the value of that is different across the devices and you can see what the value is that's different across them. This section of config's the same. Um, and then this sort of slightly grayed highlighting is showing that it's just unique to, in this case, Kevin Switch 24, whereas this is unique to Kevin Switch 48, et cetera. Now, if we wanted to, um, we can edit the config as well. So we can select those two devices, do edit config. Um, and if we wanted to, very simply, we can um, edit and change the value of this via the GUI here. So if we want to, we could change it all or we could just change one. Um, so in this case, we'll save the changes there um, for, um, we'll, we'll um, add the config there um, for changing that. And then another thing I'll do is here, you see, it's just like NetEdit. It's got that intelligent completion in here. So it understands the syntax. So if I put, if I add VLAN 34 here, um, it's now actually going to put VLAN 34 where it should be in the config file. And as you could see, you know, it's intelligent with showing you the options as you're editing the config. So it's a bit like you're actually typing the CL on the actual CLI of the device within Aruba Central. But the advantage is this is configuring all those devices. Now, if I wanted to, I can look at diff here. And this will show me the diff between um, the, um, for each device between the candidate configuration versus the running config. So you can see the difference in the configuration here. If I then said save, it will check this config can be applied to the device. And if it can, you've then got the option of, deploy, of deploying it. So really powerful um, configuration management now of the CX switches. And as I mentioned, you've also got, um, what we call express config. Um, so here you can download device profiles or network analytics engine scripts. So um, they can all be downloaded from here across multiple devices and then their status is displayed within Aruba Central when you're monitoring them. A um, Couple of other things I'd show you um, if we go to devices, um, go to, if we look at um, APs, so we look at this AP. 
Um, if you remember what we were saying in the introduction, was there some new information here? So here you've got more information about the, the wireless lands that are being broadcast or the SSIDs being broadcast by this particular AP. And then you can expand, see this, you know, which SSIDs, how many clients are on the different radios, etc. You've got um, under the Wi-Fi RF, you know, as I said, you've got the, um, if we go back, this, let's just have a look at the weak states, it's more interesting. Um, here you can see the non-Wi-Fi interference versus Wi-Fi related um, that's causing channel utilization issues, etc. As I say, the, um, you know, this is really powerful. You know, you can just type questions like, problem APs, and it will go and find all the APs that have issues. Um, in this case, it just looks like this particular AP has a problem. Um, and then, as I said, you can jump straight from there to being able to configure, locate where it is, see which clients are involved, etc., or just go straight to configuring that particular client, <clears throat> that particular AP. So here we are now in configuration mode just for that AP. So very, very fast navigation from the intelligent search bar. And as I say, this is really intelligent. So you can ask it, you know, do I have any issues? <clears throat> so as I say, there are other companies that are making a lot of fuss about natural language processing. Um, yeah, this is all included. This is just as intelligent and you don't need an extra license. So here it's telling us about the DNS issues. I can go view and go to those as ready. Um, okay. Um, the other thing I was going to show you as part of the demo that I was talking about the overview was the visibility into the um, what the network's being used for. Here you've got, you can see exactly what the network's being used for, how much traffic um, is being consumed, yeah, how much, what the network bandwidth is being consumed doing. Um, and then you can see in detail for each of those applications over time, or you can get a better idea um, via the trends. Um, if we go to a summary here, you get a nice trend graph showing you what the usage is over time, etc what applications are being used. And um, we've also got web content classification built in. Um, no need for an extra appliance or a license, extra licensing. It's all built in. You can do this with web, reputation or categories. Um, if I jump back to um, my one, hang on a sec. jump back to my setup. Um, one thing I'll show you here, as I mentioned, the AP, we've got streaming APIs. So you found they find those under account home. Um, oh, hang on a sec. It's under webhooks. So it's found under account home webhooks. So here um, we've always had webhooks um, and you can integrate via webhooks to things like Slack and ServiceNow. So if you get alerts from Aruba Central, you can stream them um, there. Um, alternatively, we do have these streaming APIs. So you can now stream location information, security, presence analytics information, all can be streamed um, and integrated into other systems. Go to account home, jump back in here, just look at those reports um, that I was talking about. Actually, what we'll do in the interest of time, we'll wrap up the demo at that point, jump back to the slides for a moment. Um, so just to wrap up on the slides, so in the online help, um, so top right hand corner, there's a question mark where the, you get to the online help that has a section that covers 
in great detail everything that's new in the latest release. Um, there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of great new functionality. I've just shown you the highlights. Um, and as I say, the key highlights for that uh, are, I think, around yeah, the CX configuration management. Yeah, so now your customers can manage via the GUI CX switches as well as AOS switches. So really have a GUI based management of our switching as well as our instant APs. The CDPI integration is a great addition. One thing to note in 253, this is what we call allow listed. So it needs to be turned on. Um, so you, if you want to be able to demonstrate this to your customers on your setup or um, you need it turned on for a customer, um, we can, you know, let us know and we can get that turned on. Um, and the other thing is um, what we call working from home support with the remote clients that you saw um, as part of the slides there. So significant new enhancements there. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a follow-up webinar on the 20th of May, looking purely at the user experience insight solution, where we've got, yeah, where we've got these sensors that can test true user experience and not just net standard network access, like being able to get onto the network, but can and being able to talk to a particular server, but we'll be able to show you how we can actually record the user interaction with an application, save that as a test, and then have that test running 24 by seven. So testing true user experience there on the network. And as you've seen, that's integrated with Aruba Central. So um, I will, you'll get an email um, in the next day or so with a link to the slides that I've used today. And I'll include in that a link to where you can register for that webinar on the 20th of May. I really recommend you join us for that. So Jack, any questions that have appeared in the dialogue that we need to answer? Um, I believe I answer all of them, but um, it's been quite interesting questions. Uh, some of them around webhooks and UXI devices. Uh, some of the questions around the APIs uh, with Central uh, and a few others. Okay, uh, but you've I've managed to answer. Well. Brilliant. Um, if there are any further questions, please type them into the um, chat box now. Um, the, the demo system, the, the, what I used to do the demo today was predominantly our demo system that's on the web, HP Aruba website. Um, so you've got full access to this and your customers do. So you can actually do this demo yourself. Um, just go to arubanetworks.com in the top right hand corner is a big orange button, everything good in Aruba's orange. Um, do try central um, and there you can go to start demo and put in your details here. Don't, don't click those and you don't get spammed. Just click class, start demo and it'll take you to the portal that I use for the majority of my demonstration. So you too can demo central to your customers to show them the value. Steos, do you want to say anything to wrap up today? Yeah, I was just going to say Thank you very much, Chris, for presenting today. Really interesting. Thanks for everyone uh, to join us today. I hope you found it compelling. One thing I would say is when you're talking to your customers, if you need any further support, um, make sure you get in touch with us. Our pre-sales team and Jack have, um, have a Ruby Central ESP live demo that they can demo for your customers, as well as UXI, ClearPass. So yeah, get engaged get in touch and um, we look forward to, to working with you guys. Brilliant. Um, with that, thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, and watch out for the email that I have a link. Um, and as again, you know, please work with Stilius and Jack and alternatively, you know, feel free to reach out to me as well. Okay, thanks for your time today. And with that, I'll um, close the webinar. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris.